how sick I really was when a drug addict or an alcoholic is in the depths of the disease. They don't give a goddamn about anybody. I had listened to the Marine Corps when I was 17 years old. 17, imagine that. A kid. A kid, for God's sakes. So the whole country basically was at war. It felt like the whole world was at war because it was just an ongoing noise that just rumbled. Vietnam, I always say, is the war that keeps on giving because it never ends. I went to UCLA as a freshman and I couldn't do it. It was tough. I would do well one quarter and then I would, you know, I'd be drunk most of the time. Um, I couldn't sit in the classrooms. It was tough because my problem was I had deep, uh, very severe post-traumatic stress disorder and didn't know it. And I was a full-blown drunk and, and drug addict at that point. I'm sitting there, it's probably about 11 in the morning. Uh, I'm already drunk. And she's got Madeline in her hands, my daughter, and packed up her stuff and is walking up the stairs. She finally had enough. You know, she had to save herself and her daughter. She couldn't watch this man destroy himself any longer. I felt the relief of them leaving and now I can really get drunk, you know. That's how sick I was. Never addressed post-traumatic stress disorder. Didn't want to even talk to anybody about the military. Um, finally got sober a month before I was sent. A month before I had to walk in and turn myself in. And I spent a year, well, it was a total of eight months locked up. And I walked out of that place and I had a year of sobriety. And I've been sober ever since. I learned how to write as a young person. I like to write. And I didn't know I, 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 I didn't know how talented I was, really. I wrote letters home to Marines, to their, their wives and their families, because they were very, a lot of them couldn't write. And I would write these letters for them. And so they, everybody would come to me for to write them letters. So all these wives were real happy. They were getting all these love letters. <laughs> it was like Cyrano de Bergerac of Vietnam, right? You know, and, uh, and these women were in love with me and didn't know it. <laughs> no. And so I started writing and I've written short stories and I'm working on a book of short stories right now. And, um, you know, if I can live long enough, I can, it's a new career for me is writing. I really enjoy it. I wake up every morning and think about it. I, 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 I see North Vietnamese soldiers trying to kill me. I see that every day. It never ends, but I know how to deal with it now, you know. Alcohol just makes it worse. Drugs make it worse. And the best gift I have of all this is helping out some, helping somebody else out whether it's a drunk or a drug addict or a combat veteran. I live a completely different life. You know, it's a one day at a time proposition. I don't know what's gonna happen next. Today is magnificent. I can't do anything about yesterday or tomorrow, basically. All I can do is plan and do well today and tomorrow will take care of itself.